Okay, lecture six for set theory and logic. We're going to talk about indexed sets today. Okay, so what that means is basically this is the idea. What if there's a whole bunch of sets and you want to do their union or their intersection? Okay, so let's just write this. Suppose we have 100 sets named, let's call the first one A sub 1, okay, through A sub 100. Now, I say sub because that's called a subscript. Um, you usually don't say the word sub when you're saying that, okay? I mean, you say A1 through A100. The person reading it sees that that's not A1 like the steak sauce, you know, it's A subscript one, okay? But you usually don't say that subscript, but if you want to, then usually we just say sub, try to save a little bit of time. Okay, but here's the point. What if you wanted to do the union of all of those, okay? Let's write down what that is. See if you remember unions. The union of all these sets is the set containing what would be the union. It would be the set containing all the elements of any of these sets. I will be more formal in a few minutes. Okay, but first I want to just talk about notation. How would I write the union of all of these? Well, obviously, one way is very inefficient, which is to just start writing and then tell you to come back in 15 minutes when I'm finally done. That would be very, very inefficient, right? One way to kind of fudge and get around that problem is to eventually uh, lose patience and put an ellipsis and then finish it off like that. That's one way, and, and a lot of times that is acceptable, but it's not the best, okay? The best way to do it is like this. You put a giant union symbol, and you write A sub and you put a variable for the subscript. I'm going to do i. And the reason I'm going to use i partially is because that's what the book has, but also because when you put a variable there, that's called an indexing variable or an index. Okay? And then what you do is you put here, this is kind of like series that you learned in calculus with the, uh, the capital sigma. Do you remember that? Same idea here. I will put i starts at 1, and I write that by writing i equals 1 on the bottom. And then i is going to stop at 100, and I indicate that by putting 100 up here. Okay? That is the union of all 100 sets. That is a shorthand for a1 union, a2 union, a3, all of the way out to a100. Okay, this is a shorthand abbreviation for that, and it's actually, it's actually better. I think that's more formal, even though it's the shorthand abbreviation. I think that is, I think that is nicer than writing this with an ellipsis here. Okay, even if you didn't do an ellipsis, even if you wrote out all 100 sets, I still, I still think the, the shorthand abbreviation is looks better. Okay. All right, so now let's write down 
what if I just said if we have n number of sets named a1 through a n okay then in that case I would put an n up here and let's write down what would be the definition of that we'll use set builder notation okay so that would be the set of all x such that x is an element of a i for some maybe even more than one i between one and n okay and the same thing works for intersections i can write the intersection of all the sets by doing a big intersection symbol a sub i i goes from one to n and that would be the set of all x such that so think about what intersections are what's it mean when you do the intersection of two sets the intersection of two sets is the elements that are in both sets right so the intersection of these n sets is the set of all x such that x is in a i for for which values of i for all of them for all i between one and n okay so let's do an example let's say a1 is the set containing 0 2 and 5 and A2 contains 1, 2, and 5. And A3 contains 2, 5, and 7. Okay. So let's write down the union of all three of those sets. What would it contain? It would contain 0, right? and 2 and 5 because those are all there because they're in a1 then I look at a2 and I see I need a, a 1 and a 2 and a 5 but I already have those and then I look over to a3 and I see that I need a 2 and a 5 which I already have but I also need a 7 and so there you go order doesn't matter if you want to reorder them in any particular way you could but it doesn't matter okay let's do the intersection of those three sets what would that have in it what elements are in all three sets the two and the five so that's how that works okay and using this you can even do unions and intersections of infinitely many sets okay if I write this the union of a sub i i goes from 1 to infinity okay that means the set of all x such that x is in a i for some maybe even more than one i equal to or greater than one so that means we have infinitely many sets a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 and there's no end to the list and this is the union of all of them okay same with intersection the intersection of ai as i goes from one to infinity is the set of all x such that x is in ai for all i equal to 
or greater than one. Okay. So let's let's do some practice with that. I'm not going to write out infinitely many sets, but what if I write this? A1 equals the set containing negative 1, 0, and 1. A2 contains negative 2, 0, and 2. Okay, and in, in, in general I'll just write AI is the set containing negative i, 0, and i, and that's for any i equal to or greater than 1. I could have even left off the first two because I, what I wrote there at the end even includes those, right? Okay, so let's write down what would be the union and the intersection of all of those. So what would be the union? Well, I would definitely have negative 1 and 0 and 1, but then I would need to add negative 2 and 2, and then I'd need to add negative 3 and 3, and negative 4 and 4, and so on. What would you end up with? Are you getting an idea? We would end up with every integer, wouldn't we? Oops. Because pick an integer, like 58. That's going to be in one of the sets, A58. Negative 23 will be in the set A23, right? Okay, what about the intersection? What is in all of those sets? I see just one number that's in all of them, the number 0. Okay. All right, now let's take it one step further. What if you had, let's see, there's certain words that I can't use yet because we haven't covered them. What if you had a different set for every real number? Like what if you were doing the same thing I suppose when I look back at, at what we just did, I, well, let, me, let me point out something here. What I wrote there, for any i equal to or greater than 1. I, I realize I didn't say that, but I meant any integer um, greater than or equal to 1. That's what I meant. I, I guess I thought that was kind of implied, although maybe it actually wasn't. And same thing up here. Indices are usually assumed to be integers unless otherwise stated. So like right here, when you write the union of AI, I goes from 1 to 3. Unless otherwise stated, it is understood that there must be three sets, A1, A2, and A3. Not any such thing as A1.7. See what I'm saying? But you could have an A1.7, but if you do have something weird like that, you better make it clear. Okay? And, and what would you do? What if you took the real numbers? I want you to just imagine the number line, okay? With all the real numbers. What if you gave every single number its own set? And what if you called that set A with a subscript where the subscript was just the number that's in the set? Can you imagine that? So you would have a set with zero, and it would be called A0. And then you would have a set with 1.7, and it would be called A1.7 and a set with negative 48.9, and that would be A negative 48.9, okay? 
So then, in that case, what is your indexing set? Okay, so what I mean by that is the set of indices, like in this example right here, the indexing set, let me write this down in blue. The indexing set, let's call it with a script I. And that would be the set one, let me move this over so you can see it, one, two, three. That would be called the indexing set. Okay? And you can even do this. Look where I wrote the union where i goes from 1 to 3. Uh, that's not the only way to do it. You could even write the union where i is any element of the set 1, 2, 3. That's another way of doing it that's perfectly acceptable. It's a little bit more writing than you need. I like the first way better. Okay. Or you can just put the name of the indexing set there. Okay. Now the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because you have to do that when the indexing set is something strange. Like if you had a set for a different set for every real number, then your indexing set would be the set of real numbers. Okay? And then you would have to write it you would have to write it something like this. The union of all of them would have to be written like that. Okay? Now I noticed the book, when it, when it goes into this mode, it's not using the letter I anymore, and it's using an alpha instead. Okay? But the bottom line is this. Let me erase that for a minute. The bottom line is this. Let's write, suppose I is an indexing set. Indexing a collection of sets. Okay, in other words, there is, give me one second here, I just need to check something. Okay, I thought for one second that this wasn't recording. I had to make sure it was. So in other words, there is a set A sub alpha for each alpha that is an element of I. Okay then if I write the union of A sub alpha, alpha is an element of I, that means the set of all x such that x is an element of A sub alpha for some, maybe more than one, alpha in I. In the intersection of A sub alpha, alpha is an element of I, is the set of all x such that x is an element of A sub alpha for all alpha in I. 
OK. Now, some of the questions in the homework, uh, I notice one of them has a typo, so I want to go over that with you. And some of them are worded uh, slightly differently. And so I'd like to do one of each of those with you. So these are right off the homework, OK? This is for section 1.8. So first of all, number one has a typo, 1A, I mean. It says this. It says to find the union where i is an element of the natural numbers. And then it has here a closed interval from n to n plus 1. So there's a typo there. The, the index variable there should be an n, not an i. OK, and the other thing is this is closed intervals. So that's the union of all of these things. What's the smallest natural number? It's 1. So that's the union of the closed interval from 1 to 2 with the closed interval from 2 to 3 with the closed interval from 3 to 4, and so on and so forth. So if you did that, what would you end up with? Think about it for a minute. Okay, now, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you be able to capture every number that's equal to or greater than 1 by doing that? So then this union is the set of all numbers e equal to or greater than 1. I'll go ahead and write it as an interval. It would look like that. Okay? I wanted to do that one with you, not because it's hard, but just because it had a typo. Now, 2 and 3, they're, they're worded a little differently. Let's look at what this says. For 2a on the homework for section 1.8, it says, find the union and intersection of each of the following indexed collection of sets. And part a says this. For each natural number n, Let a sub n equal the natural numbers minus, remember this is set difference, okay, minus the set of natural numbers up to n, okay, and then it says comma, and let script A be the collection, which is another word for set, of all sets A sub n such that n is a natural number. Okay, so let's look at this. And first of all, let's make sure we understand what those sets look like. So let's write down some of them. So what would A1 be? A1 would be all the natural numbers take away this set, which would be what? That would be all of the natural numbers starting with 2, correct? And A2 would be the natural numbers take away, oh, hang on, no, I'm sorry. I did that first one wrong. I misread what I had written. Let me let me go back here. I, I was thinking for a minute that we're taking away everything up to 1. But no, I should be taking away. Uh, ah, I was right. You start at 1 and you go to n. And in this case, n is 1. So I start at 1 and I go to 1. So I was right. I'm sorry. Sometimes I second guess myself and say that I was wrong and then realize that I was right. Okay. Sorry about that. Now, A2. We have the natural numbers take away the set starting at 1 and going up to 2. I better put this back up here, which was correct for A1. Okay. 
So what would A2 look like? It would start with a number 3, wouldn't it? Basically, it turns out that AN is the set of all natural numbers starting with what? N plus 1. Okay. I'll just go ahead and write down one more. A3 would be the set of all natural numbers take away 1, 2, and 3. So what are you left with? You're left with the natural numbers starting at 4. Okay. All right. Now, I want to deal with the wording of the question. They want us to find the union and the intersection of these. Now, what it says on paper it says find the union and intersection of each of the following indexed collection of sets. So, in this case, this would be called an indexed collection of sets. Okay, and they want us to find the union and the intersection of that. That just means exactly what we've been talking about. They want us to find this. And this. So let's decide what we think they are. So what would be the union of all of the sets? Think about that. I believe that would be this set here. Don't you think so? Let's see if you agree with that. And what would be the intersection? of all of the sets. I believe the intersection would be empty. Because no matter what natural number you, you're thinking of, that natural number is not going to be in all of the sets. Okay, I'll leave B for you to do. I mean, go ahead and write this one out on your homework and turn it in, but I'm just doing it with you, so I hope you get it right. Okay, let's look at three. Three gives you a collection of sets and it says for each of the following collections of sets define a set a sub n for each natural number n such that the index collection is precisely the given collection of sets then find both the union and intersection of the indexed collection of sets okay what does that mean let me show you 3a 3a says this, give you a set containing, we have the closed interval from 1 to 2, the closed interval from 2 to 3, the closed interval from 3 to 4, the closed interval from 4 to 5, and then it says dot dot dot. Okay, so just so that you understand the the notation here, okay? So that is a set of sets, what we would usually call a collection of sets. And this is A1 right there. And this second one is A2. And the third one is A3, and so on. Okay? And one way of, just one second, I lost my page here. Okay, one way of, of naming that collection of sets is to write that that is the set of all A sub N where N is a natural number. That's a, that's a way of indicating this whole thing. Okay, just so that you understand the notation when you see it later. Okay, now, as for actually doing the problem, they want us to find the union and intersection of all of those. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do that. What would be the union of all those? Well, guess what? We already did it. That was problem 1A. And we got this answer. But what about the intersection? What about that? Well, I don't think there's any number that is going to be on all of those sets. So the intersection will be empty. OK. So there's a lot of new notation today. You know, several different ways of writing the same thing. And you're going to need to get used to that notation. We're almost done with the, um, the uh, chapter one on set theory. There is one more section. But, well, there's actually two more sections. But there's no homework from those two sections. I am going to go over those two sections with you in a lecture. But there won't be any homework from them. So we are now at the end of the material for homework assignment one. So I'm going to set a due date for that. And it's not going to be too terribly far in the future because you've had a lot of time to be working on the assignment, um, you know, up until this point. So it'll probably be due in less than a week for sure. Okay. Uh, and and we're going to go over in the next lecture sections 1.9 and 1.10, but there's no homework problems from then, from them. And then we're going to start chapter two, which is logic. Okay, and it is going to require a lot more thought on your part than the the uh, set theory has required. And it's not that we're totally done with set theory. We're going to learn more set theory as we go. It's just that we're going to start learning uh, logic now as well. Okay, have a good afternoon.